Ahimsa is a Sanskrit term meaning to do no harm or to avoid all forms of violence. The precept of nonviolence is a basic tenet of all the world's religions. Kind viewers, welcome to Planet Earth, our loving home. Our program today will explore the concept of Ahimsa in relation to agriculture and look at alternative methods of fruit and vegetable cultivation that cause no harm to living beings. In a video conference with Supreme Master Television staff, Supreme Master Ching Hai explained more about Ahimsa agriculture or alternative farming methods that do not employ soil to grow certain crops, thereby avoiding harm to other sentient beings such as the beneficial worms. There are many organic farming methods that at least you don't hurt the worms. You can plant them in the water or you can plant them on elevated soil bed and you don't hurt the worm. And um, in Vietnam, they cultivate, for example, peanuts in the sandy uh, soil. There's no, no soil and no, no worm at all ever live there. Plant your own vegetable, then you have absolute control about how you harvest and what you harvest and what you eat. Around the globe, people are adopting animal-free diets to avoid causing violence or suffering to any living being. An organic vegan lifestyle is also the most sustainable for our precious planet. However, Ahimsa has subtle qualities that are not commonly known. For example, followers of Jainism make great efforts to avoid hurting even tiny insects and other small beings. Thus, consuming root crops such as potatoes, beets, and carrots is discouraged among Jains, as the harvesting of these crops can harm worms in the soil. But can fruits and vegetables be grown so as to avoid harming even the smallest worms? Yes, these farming techniques include hydroponics, aeroponics, raised bed cultivation, and farming in pure sand. The most widely used of these systems is hydroponics, a method that requires no soil. Instead, plants are grown in a solution of water and minerals with the roots sometimes being supported by an inert medium such as perlite, a type of volcanic ash, gravel, or even coconut fiber. Hydroponic gardening has several advantages over traditional soil-based methods. In hydroponics, several labor-intensive tasks such as digging, tilling, weeding, and hoeing are virtually eliminated. Also, because hydroponically grown plants receive better nutrition, they usually grow faster and produce much higher yields than those crops grown in traditional types of gardens or fields. According to University of Florida researchers, hydroponics can produce almost 10 times more food per square meter than traditional farming methods. Mr. David Barton is a greenhouse operator of Island Horticulture in Canterbury, New Zealand, who has been growing vegetables hydroponically for over 25 years. He explains one of the reasons why hydroponic farming is more efficient than traditional methods. For us, because we are a commercial growing in a glass house, the benefit is that we do not have plant losses. Every plant that we grow, it produces a consistent amount, it produces consistent quality, right to the end. But perhaps the greatest advantage of hydroponic gardening is that it uses up to 90% less water than crops grown through traditional means. In hydroponic farming, no water is wasted. On a sunny day, four litres per plant will be given to each plant. Of that four litres, 80% will be consumed by the plant and the other 20% will be used as drain we have almost no runoff. All our water is going to the plant. There is no waste water. On the site, we have 1.4 hectares. Yes, we do have waste, but it is controlled and managed. So all our inputs are utilized. Because of its extremely efficient use of water, hydroponics can yield abundant crops even in desert conditions. In fact, the world's largest commercial hydroponics facility is in the hot, dry desert area of Wilcox, Arizona, USA. Owned by Eurofresh Farms, the facility sold 125 million pounds of tomatoes in 2005. Over the years, Eurofresh has expanded its operations and now has an incredible 1.29 square kilometers, or 318 acres, under glass. 
representing about a third of the commercial hydroponics greenhouse area in the U.S. Hydroponic gardening is also particularly applicable in areas where it is difficult or impossible to grow food due to climate or atmospheric conditions. For example, because of its long, harsh winters, Canada actively pursues hydroponic agriculture in heated greenhouses. The United States National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or NASA, has been conducting extensive research on hydroponic techniques in an effort to discover ways of growing food in outer space or on other planets. You're watching Planet Earth, our loving home. When we return after these brief messages, we'll learn more about hydroponic farming, one of the Ahimsa agricultural methods in which no worms are harmed in the cultivation of crops. Please keep your dial tuned here to Supreme Master Television. On today's Planet Earth, Our Loving Home, we are exploring farming methods which would be considered as Ahimsa agriculture, in which no sentient beings such as the beneficial worms are harmed in the cultivation process. Let's continue with our discussion from our previous segment of hydroponic farming, a method of growing plants in mineral nutrient solutions. Practically speaking, many of us would probably like to know, do fruits and vegetables grown using hydroponics taste good? Indeed they do. In fact, Eurofresh Farms has been recognized by the American Culinary Institute as the home of America's best tasting tomato for the past 10 years. Fruits and vegetables grown in hydroponics are also just as nutritious as conventionally grown produce. The nutritional requirements of the plants are exactly the same wherever they're grown. It doesn't matter how they're grown. The requirements of the plants are the same. The plant has to take up the nutrient in exactly the same formula. The most important thing is that the plant is grown well. Then it will be good for you. Much of the fresh produce provided to athletes and officials at the 2008 Summer Olympics in Beijing, China was grown locally in organic hydroponic greenhouses. World-renowned hydroponics expert Michael James Stramiotis states that this alternative was chosen because hydroponics allow strict quality control, reliable supply, environmental benefits, and it produces high nutrition crops. Where did the concept of hydroponics come from? The idea is actually ancient and some of the first peoples known to practice this method of gardening were the Incas and Aztecs. Hydroponic growing is a very, very old technique. It was first developed by the hanging gardens of Babylon, which is very, very old. The Americans developed that further in the Second World War to feed their troops further into the islands. Subsequently, it was developed commercially by Dr. Cooper uh, in England and taken up and expanded very, very much commercially by the Dutch and other countries around the world. Today, worldwide, I would guess that at least 90% of commercial greenhouse crops are grown hydroponically, using one or another form of hydroponic growing. The first book about this form of agriculture was Silva Servarum written by Sir Francis Bacon of England, published in 1627. English naturalist John Woodward continued in hydroponics experiments by growing spearmint hydroponically. In 1699, he published his results, stating that plants raised in water obtained from rivers or ponds grew more abundantly than those grown in distilled water. He concluded that the plants benefited from nutrition found in natural water. This was confirmed in 1842 when German botanists Julius von Sachs and Wilhelm Knopp identified nine elements they believed to be essential to plant growth. By dissolving these elements in the water fed to a plant, both growth and fruit production were greatly enhanced. In 1929, the concept of hydroponic gardening began to take root and expand in the U.S fueled by the enthusiastic efforts of Professor William Frederick Jarek of the University of California at Berkeley. In fact, the term hydroponics was coined by Professor Jarek and is derived from the Greek words hydros, meaning water, and ponos, meaning labor. Today, hydroponic farmers grow plants in water containing several dissolved minerals and nutrients. 
The six primary nutrients are nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium, and sulfur, along with trace amounts of other elements such as boron, copper, iron, zinc, and manganese, ensuring harvests that are abundant, good tasting, and filled with nutrition. Thank you for joining us for today's Planet Earth, our loving home on Ahimsa Farming Methods. Join us next Wednesday for part two, where we will continue to explore hydroponic systems and other alternative methods of crops cultivation in which no worms or other small sentient beings are harmed. Up next, stay tuned for enlightening entertainment right after Noteworthy News here on Supreme Master Television. May your life be filled with the light and love of heaven.